Welcome back. This is the R2D2 Center Wood Frame Part 2. I am cutting a solid quartering right here. As you can see, I've got a little boo boo up at the top. This came from taking a huge kick because I'm trying to cut through such a thick piece of wood. What I should have done was used a bandsaw to cut this through to make it about a sixteenth of an inch close to the template and it would avoid all this. As you can see here, I've got a lot of route through as well. It just makes it really difficult. So you see it does speed up when the pieces get thinner closer to the template and then it slows down. Here this is nothing new, I'm just coming to the rounded portion right here. We'll just go around this as we did the tops of the uprights in part one. Here is a chunk that needs to be taken off, so we'll wrap that away. Again, this is an eighth ring. We've just got the double-sided stick tape on there, peel that off, put the template on there. Again, if you had a bandsaw, it's good to get that close to the template as possible. But just watch this. We're going to watch for kickback, and you'll see here after I route this, kickback happens right about here. You'll see a huge shift. There's one kick, and then it takes another right here. And that's just from probably being cutting through too thick of a piece and the fact that the bearing bit may need to be lowered just a little bit. So here I'm just shaving it down a little bit more and that's the best thing to do is once again get a bandsaw if you have one or find a way to get it closer to the edge. And here's one more example of kickback. This one's a pretty gruesome one too and you'll see it right here. And here's this kick I was talking about. You see it chipped the edges right there. We're going to get this corner and this will be the eighth wing that will be completed. Here is our quarter ring. This is the cut ring. We're going around the edge right here. You'll see a slot that we get routed out. Again, nothing new there. We've seen the slots in the previous video for the uprights. So we're going to continue around this template right here. I don't take any usual kicks here, but you can see I still have a thick section right here that needs to be cut through. So you've probably heard me say it a couple times, band saw. That's a key word. Get one, it'll come in a lot handier when it comes to cutting these thick pieces out. Moving on to the shoulder wings, this is one of them. We are going to cut this out. And you see right at the top here, we've got our little slot that will get cut out here shortly. Once we cut out the slot, we're going to move on to this flat piece, which is right here. By doing this, it's going to leave an inside rounded edge. Sometimes it may work when you do your final assembly. Sometimes it might not. It just might need a little bit of sanding. This is where that circle round edge will be, and you can see it right there up at the top. Here we're going to do the other side of this. Took another kick right there. So yet again, cutting big chunks out does cause it to kick, and flying objects as well. You've seen that enough. Here is the MDF getting cut. That's big pieces as well, but you see MDF cuts a lot different than this Baltic birch plywood. You can just pretty much glide through it with this router bit right here. As you can see, it just it cuts like butter. making here is the side plate. There are going to be two of these. I've got the double stick tape that I'm putting down here. I go all the way around the whole edge with this double stick tape. It makes it a lot easier. We peel off the backings and once we do that we put this onto our piece of wood that we are going to cut. Make sure it is nice and secure. Uh, you do make two side plates. When you do that you're going to flip it. Here is a chunk of wood that I'm putting down right here. That way I can route out this little slot since the slot is supposed to be whole at the bottom. Use double-sided tape to do this. Don't use the masking tape like I did because it didn't work very well. I still got it done, but the best way would be to be double-stick tape. Make sure you have your router bit raised up to cut that. Then lower the bearing right back down. That way you can cut the rest of this out. And remember, just go around that slot that we cut out since we already have it the way we want it to be and we don't want to get inside that slot since it's a whole piece. We'll go around the whole thing. We'll cut out the slots. Once we cut out the slots, we're going to cut out the long portion slot. Here is one inside rounded corner. Again, you may need to sand that down a little bit when the middle ring sits on. We're going to take our little jig right here, put this down on both sides. We clamp it, that way it doesn't go anywhere. Once it's clamped down, we are going to take our router. Stick that in the slotted groove, what we do here, zero it down all the way to the bottom. We adjust our depth turret to the bottom. 
We'll lower our depth rod all the way to the stop point, lock it in place, move that red line to the zero point, unlock the depth rod, move it up to the depth that we want to cut you see on the line indicator, and lock the depth rod back down. We'll move that turret position back up a few notches, that way we can make several passes and not go too deep into the wood. We've got it set to where we want, we turn the router on, we start routing it out, and just as I said earlier, We'll make several passes with this, that way we complete our depth cut and the slot inside of this side plate. After the first pass, as you can see, we adjust that turret down one more step, plunge all the way down, make that cut. We'll do that several times until our cut is at the depth that we want. Here is the final side plate. We have the other one which is right next to it. All I had to do is flip that template over. As always, don't forget to subscribe, comment, and like. Stay tuned for part three, which is the side and base plate.